Hi friends, so today I'm going to start lecture 61 on our helicopter dynamics course. And today I'm going to focus on flow K theory for forced response. I'm Dr. Ranjan Banguli. Now, we know that the governing differential equations for a rotor in forward flight can be expressed as m q double dot plus c q dot plus k q equals f. And now, typically in a general sense, m, c, k, f are all periodic functions of time. And typically the time period is expressed as 2 pi. But the way we are developing the formulation, the time period could be anything else. So this formulation is valid for any periodic system. Now the first thing we do to make the equations more suitable for stability analysis is that we convert it to a system such as this. So essentially we have y dot is ay plus gt, where now at and gt are periodic functions with time period given by capital T. Now we have explained this in a previous video when we talked about the constant coefficient differential equation. So you will recall that A constitutes M, C and K matrices and G constitutes the M and the F matrix and vector respectively. Now this kind of equation can be solved by any numerical integration scheme. So you could use, for example, Runge Kutta or D gear method to solve this differential equation. And now we are talking of not the stability, but we are talking of the response. So essentially, you will have to keep GT here and you can solve this. Now, whenever you solve a differential equation system in time, initial conditions need to be specified. So you could specify some initial conditions and then try to solve this differential equation. Now what would happen is that the time marching process would go forward and you would get a typical response which is the value of y as plotted with respect to time t. And initially you would have a transient response and then the transient would die out after some time and leave you with the steady state response. Now, many times we are interested only in the steady state response of the system because these machines tend to fly in their steady state or tend to be in their steady state for a long period of time. And that's where most of the loads and design studies need to be performed. The transients are also important. If you are interested in transients, then you need to solve this equation using time integration methods with some initial condition. But what we are going to today is we are going to think about the case when you are more interested in the steady state response and not in the transient response. So one of the things which could be done is that if we were able to select the initial conditions using some mathematical approach, we can actually remove all the transients from the response. And in that case, the steady state dynamic response can be found by one integration which is performed on time t. Now in rotor systems I keep reminding you t is equal to 2 pi. Now what this Loquet force response method does is that it lets you calculate these initial conditions which you can use to solve the periodic differential equations. So let us assume a general solution of the form yt equals yht plus ypt, where yht is the homogeneous solution and ypt is the particular solution. We also let yet be the complete solution of the equation for a given set of initial conditions. Now one can add a number of extra homogeneous solutions, which we will call as delta yht for different initial conditions to this solution yet. Now you can do this because all these are essentially solutions of the differential equation. So they are going to work out. 
So these new solutions we express as yt equals yet plus delta yht. Okay. Now, how do we get these homogeneous solutions? We essentially set g equals 0 whenever we are trying to go for a homogeneous solution. So recall that from previous study of differential equations of a spring mass damper type of system. So you will get a total of 2n homogeneous solutions subject to these initial conditions. So for example, the first initial condition would be y1 equals 1 and all the rest y's are 0. Okay, Whenever i is not equal to 1, all those y's are 0. The next case is y2 equals 1 and all the rest of the y's are 0. Okay, All the way to the last case where y2n equal to 1 and all the rest of the y's are 0. So once you solve the system, you are going to get something like the Floquet transition matrix. So essentially, we can write this delta yht as a series here of y1t, y2t, all the way like that, and then these coefficients c1, c2, and so on. So if we collect all these terms, y1, y2, and so on, we will recall from our previous discussion on Floquet theory for stability that this is the Floquet transition matrix at time t. And then we multiply it by the constant coefficients. So now let's go back to our general equation yt is yet plus delta yht. But now I have calculated the expression for delta yht, so I can write yt is yet plus qt into c. This was obtained in the previous slide. Now for a periodic solution with period t, one gets this because this will naturally hold. Remember, the system is periodic, so the value of y at the end of the time period is going to be the same as the value of y at zero. So I can write this equation here, where all I have done is I have taken the general equation yt is yet plus qtc, and I have substituted t is capital T on one side, and I have substituted t is 0 on the second side. Okay, And now I know that Q capital T is the transition matrix at the end of the time period t, and Q0 is the unit matrix. Now from this equation, I can obtain the value of this c, and c is given here. Now this essentially lets me write down the, the solution y0 in this particular form. Okay, so one of the important things here is that this equation gives us the initial conditions in the Floquet force response, which we need to use to essentially solve for the steady state. Now, for simplicity, we can set y e 0 equals 0. So that would remove these two terms here involving y e 0, and I would be left with the rest of the equation here. So essentially that then becomes the initial condition which we use to get the steady state response of the system and yet is the complete solution of the governing equation for zero initial conditions. So we need to do that once and once we are done with that we have calculated yet we need to calculate the transition matrix and then we can get this set of initial conditions and when we use these initial conditions on the problem of the differential equation, the periodic differential equation, we are going to get straight away the steady state response of the problem. And like I said, many times you are only interested in the steady state response. And in those cases, you can use the Floquet forced response approach also. And in case you have already calculated the transition matrix for stability, you can reuse that in this particular situation. So this class essentially told you about some of the methods for solving steady response. Later in the course, we are also going to look at uh, uh, FEM in time. That's a different method for solving this. And of course, if you do not have access to some of these methods, you can always use typical time integration methods such as based on Runge-Kutta and so on. So you can use standard packages like MATLAB 
or Python to actually solve these systems also. But you have to wait for the transients to die out. So I will stop now and I will see you in my next video.